Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you, this is Secretary Inclusive Framework, to allow me to present an uh, equal position on the unified approach. Since the beginning of the uh, process, ECRI has tried to consider reform from a perspective of global public interest rather than national advantage and look to put forward fair, effective and sustainable tax solution for development. In our submission, we have acknowledged the massive leap forward in terms of uh, understanding that multinationals are unitary businesses and the move towards formulaic approaches to allocate profits for multinational. This is, in our view, real progress. With this in mind, we also appreciate the um, proposal by the Secretariat, which is aimed at breaking the impasse in the negotiation. But this is also the fact to remove three proposals from the table, the US proposal, the UK proposal, and the proposal by the Intergovernmental Group O24. It has also meant that we're not being able to evaluate the feasibility and the revenue impact of these three proposals. Regrettably, we believe that the unifying approach in the current form is unlikely to deliver an outcome that is a substantial improvement over the existing framework. What could be a comprehensive reform has now been narrowed down to yet to be determined larger consumer-facing businesses with the risk of further carve-outs, and the pressure for carve-outs we see is immense. As a result, it's not surprising that this will lead to modest increase in tax revenue. We worry that this modest revenue increase is unlikely to justify the ongoing political investment in the process, the increasing complexity and administrative um, problem that multinationals and administration will have to face. The distributive implications of the proposal are also unclear, as no economic analysis has been published. So we urge the OECD to make this public available for scrutiny. It is important that the citizens of the countries that are part of the inclusive framework are able to determine the distributive implications. In our view, the current proposal, as it is, is not built on solid ground. We see a number of flaws, but we also see the opportunity to rescue it and to address some of this concern. The consumer-facing notion is flawed both conceptually and practically. There is no economic rationale to create special rules for a subset of the economy. In the end, all businesses exist thanks to and face in different degrees the end consumers and users. Attempting to draw the line of what consumer facing is versus what is not is unlikely to deliver certainty the business call for and will be particularly problematic for businesses that are both B2C and B2B, where segmentation between consumer and non-consumer is likely to give rise to significant compliance costs, tax avoidance opportunity, and tax disputes. We have not mentioned so far the elephant in the room, which is the accounting problem that this proposal will create, but hopefully in the next few sessions that will be addressed. In our view, the outcome of this negotiation should result in a new set of rules that is applicable to most, if not all, MNEs. So a proposal that is applicable to all businesses, except for those that, for political reason, are explicitly carved out, will be preferable. We also believe the proposal to split profits between routine and residual is also conceptually wrong. It's not possible to distinguish between routine, so what's locally generated and what's residual, which is internally genera internationally generated, profits are multinational. As all profits are essentially the result of the global activities of the firm. And so far, we don't see any theoretical foundation to explain or justify this split, apart from the need to keep the existing transfer pricing system in place for a large part of the profits. In our view, all profits of multinational should be apportioned through a formula. This will truly simplify the system and obviate the need for additional profit sharing calculation, amount B and amount C. Different location formula could be developed for both sectors of the economy to recognize the principle that different supply and demand factors interact in creating the multinational's global profits. For this reason, we support the allocation of multinational income that will take place under the proposal which was put forward by the G24 for fractional apportionment, and this will allocate all profits through the use of a balanced formula. We urge the Secretariat to bring this back to be used as a basis to design a truly comprehensive solution. I agree with the comments made on um, by the previous commentators on the revenue thresholds at country level, although I think that um, in terms of threshold for these rules to apply, these new rules to apply, they should be 
kept as low as possible because it is uh, not fair that big multinationals will have to face the additional complexity while middle multinationals will not. And some middle sized multinationals represent a significant shares of the revenue of small developing countries. Concluding, we concur with the view of the business and BIAC this morning that the status quo is unsustainable. But we believe that wanted systemic change is not idealism, but realism. It is acknowledged in a number of submissions that the current lack of public trust in international tax systems is harmful to both multinational and governments and will only continue unless a comprehensive solution is found. The amount of problems identified in this, in this submission over the last few weeks clearly suggests that the broad we think is required. We don't believe it's necessary to rush into a solution that look unworkable and insufficient, and we urge the Secretary of the Inclusion Framework to work and to take the necessary time to deliver a more principled proposal, broader in scope, simplified, to deliver something that is comprehensive and equitable. Thank you again, Mr. President.